Good day, colleagues. It is Penny Nansamba once again from Makere University, COVAB, SBLS, Department of BDS. I'm here with the fifth and final tip that will help us develop our detailed design documents. These are blueprints that we are going to use to get our courses online. So we've dedicated a right shop to fast track transformation of COVAB's programs into online courses. And the right shop is going to be carried out on Saturday, 30th September, 2023. Please come over to the GIS lab at COVAB on Saturday, 30th. September 2023 will be there waiting for you from 8.30 up to 5.30 p.m. Bring your computers, bring the working templates and let's get them finished in this right shop. So today we are looking at part eight in the design template that was given to us and part eight is the last part. Part 8 actually helps us prepare the study guide. The study guide is going to help learners get a pro broader understanding of how the course is organized, why we are doing things in certain ways to support their learning, and in essence, it gives them a roadmap for the semester. All the questions they're asking, where's the timetable? Who's the lecturer? Which topic? Where's the venue? What time? Is there an assignment? When is the deadline? All of these are answered in the study guide. So our template gives us a number of factors or a number of working points that will help us build the study guide. And fortunately, many of these working points already exist in our detailed design document. So we're going to look at an example of a study guide. The study guide actually indicates the university, the institution, college, code of the course, name of this course, and the fact that it's a study guide and we also put the course instructors. So much of this we got in the first part of our DDD. So we are just extrapolating and getting, the, getting it into this format. We also have, we also acknowledge the module developers, helped us get the module into an online format. We've got the date the date when the study guide was produced. And after that, there's a statement on the availability of the course and copyright licenses. This is a template that is given to you. The next page gives us a statement from Quality Assurance Directorate Macquarie Ray. The next page talks about the quality assurance measures that we have put into place during the module or course development. Then we have a welcome message. Since you're online and you're not available to welcome the students physically, you can put there a message. Message with an address if they want to contact you or a phone number if they want to contact you, especially if you're going to have a WhatsApp group to help coordinate the course. So this is the welcome message 
for my students who are doing hematology and blood transfusion science blt 2120 it's a course for the second year students in the first semester welcome message i just gave them an overview of how the learning page will look like so the next part of the uh, study guide has got the course outline and this we actually synthesized in part four of our ddd so the course outline or overview has got the aims and objectives it has the learning outcomes course-wide intended learning outcomes how we're going to grade the course And then the next page has got the constructive alignment of the course. We did this in actually part five and part six. We had an extended course alignment with resources. And in part six, we actually fitted the course into the semester timetable and days. But now we've generated a constructive alignment that's going to give the students a broader understanding of the course, why we are doing certain things, and the times at which these certain programs are going to be done. In essence, it is a roadmap to guide the students through this course or module throughout the semester. So we've got the topics, serial numbers for the topics. I put a subtopics, but you may not want to do this. We have the course wide intended learning outcomes that are addressed by the topics we have put here. The day when the topic will be covered or the week when the topic will be covered and the venue and the time. And we have gone ahead to also give the students the assessment strategy that we are going to use. So my first topic here is actually ground zero, introduction and social cafe. This is online. We want them to update their student profiles, get to know the uh, facilitators, share their learning expectations. Um, there are no ELOs, course-wide intended learning outcomes addressed by this topic, but it's still essential. Now, I've told them the week when it will be done, week one, the day when it will be done, 29th August, 2023. It's going to be done online. I've given them the times and it's going to be assessed. I will assess the profile that the student has uploaded online under word marks so still on the first week we had an orientation to blended approach of learning it was on the 31st august it was in person in class the lecture time was 2 to 4 p.m so now that the students are very orientated and know what to do, we are going to look at the first topic that appears on the curriculum or in the course outline. And it's on to do with leukocytes, white blood cells, which the type of leukocytes functions and patterns in disease. It's divided into many subtopics, 1.11, 1.12. So the top subtopic 1.11 is addressed under learning course-wide learning outcome one. Subtopic 1.12 is also addressed by course-wide intended learning outcome one. Now all this we did when we aligned our topics to the intended learning outcomes in part two and part three of the DDD. So we're just extrapolating 
copying and pasting. So these topics are done in the second week on Tuesday. The date is here. It is online and the times are here. Still in the second week, Tuesday, they'll go ahead and do topic 1.2. And then in the second week on Thursday, they're going to have a class seminar where they presented to me what they had, the research they had carried out on the different white blood cells, their functions, and what we see when we get a disease. I've given them the, the strategy I'm going to use to assess these particular topics. They are self-reflection questions and as fortunate to use the H5P format that's able to bring the questions as the students navigate through the PowerPoint slide or listen to the video on Moele. They had an assignment and they had to submit it in week two by the 5th of, of September. They had an assignment which was to be presented on the 7th September. During this time, they are being assessed. Now they're going to have a practical, it's called wet, wet practical two. I assessed them when they interpreted the leucograms that was later in another section. And we're still going to do an online quiz on these topics, an end of semester written exam, and an end of semester practical exam. So you're going to find the students are not going to approach me and ask me, is this topic going to be examined? How are we going to examine it? Is it going to come in the practical? All of this has been given to them already. So you can see the constructive alignment of the course for the students is actually a roadmap that's going to assist their learning. This is detailed and is taking quite a number of pages. Even the practicals appear on the constructive alignment. So the third part of the study guide has got the course content, which is the unit number and names. The unit number 1.1, .1, the name leukocytes. Unit number 1.1, .1, types of leukocytes functions and the names. So the student is able or the learner is able to follow these unit numbers and their names as they appear on the learning management system. So we've outlined, it's actually the course outline, which we give them and they can access it directly on the learning management system when they want to follow how we are progressing through the curriculum. Part four has the list of reference materials and we synthesize this list in part five in the extended constructive course alignment with resources in our DDDs. So we just extrapolate it and list it for the student to see so they can see i mean if they want to refer to it they can see what kind of study materials they have but this is not only for the student if our fellow lecturers or head of departments wants to review the courses and study materials that we have we already have them online I mean, we already have them collected in the study guide and they are up for review. All the materials that we use. Part five is the module notional hours on the timetable. It's actually the exact time that we use, that the student uses when they're um, navigating through the course. But we shall come to that later. Part six is an important entity for the students. It contains 
the weekly scheduled activities and their deadlines. So each week the student is going on to Moele to work on the course. Sometimes they're meeting you in class, but they need to have a guide as to which of the assignments are they submitting when or which of the assignments have to be done on which date and by which time and when are the deadlines. So this you'll generate from the DDDs, from your weekly activities. And we've given them the dates when they are due. So the student will be able to know when he's supposed to have completed something, when he's supposed to have submitted something. And in these weekly activities, I've also included the sessions when they come to class. I've included them in orange color so that they don't get lost and mixed up with the sessions where they're submitting online. So that in short is the study guide. The basic tool that the students are going to use to navigate the courses or modules we have given to them online. With that, we want to say thank you. And let me stop.